Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Welcome, 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 welcome to PTP OG, Practicing the Presence of God, Pastor Michael Hayes. Back with you this morning. I trust that things are going well for you. Appreciate you being here with us today. It is Tuesday, the 21st of July. Can you believe it? It's the 21st of July. 2020. And 2020 has been a crazy year, has it not? It has just been unbelievable. I don't know what's going on. I mean, you know, if you're a person who doesn't like surprises, then 2020 is really a bad, bad year for you. <laughs> because it's nothing but surprises in this year. But nonetheless, glad to have you with us this morning. Good morning to you. Hope you had a wonderful evening. God is truly good, and we love the Lord today. We're going to look at uh, our text for this morning, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 9. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 9. Here is what the Bible says to us this morning. By the way, while you're looking that up, I want to remind you that we do have a YouTube channel. It's called Practicing the Presence of God channel, PTPOG. You can go online and go to your YouTube page, and uh, you will see uh, our channel if you just type in in the search bar there in the YouTube, uh, Practicing the Presence of God. We've got quite a few videos on there. We add videos every day. We'd love for you to be a part of that. Uh, subscription family. So if you go there, please subscribe. Please subscribe to that channel. I need to get about a thousand viewers before I can do what I really want to do. So I really appreciate uh, you uh, following uh, us and uh, being a supporter of PTPOG ministry. So with that, we're going to look at our uh, proverb today, which is Proverbs 18 and verse number nine. Proverbs 18 and verse number nine. Let's look at what the word of God says for us today. It says, he also, let me turn this light out. He that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. He that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is wasteful. Amen. So we're going to ask God to be with us now in the word of prayer. Today we're talking about the brothers of waste. The brothers of waste. Let's bow our heads briefly for a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your grace and love and mercy. Your kindness, Lord, is beyond all measure and incomparable. We thank you, God, for the blessing of this day. We pray, Lord, in a special way that you would anoint our eyes, our minds, our hearts, to be prepared for what you have to say to us this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. And Lord, please give us this day our daily bread in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're looking at this proverb here. and It's very interesting. It's a very powerful proverb, as all of them are. And uh, it talks about two types of people. Slothful men, slothful men who take pride in caring for their low income and their few assets 
often have a way of despising the waste of hardworking men who have larger incomes. And diligent men that waste and squander their large incomes often despise the slothfulness and apparent lazy men that may be a little more frugal than they are. But the truth of the matter is these two men are actually a pair of brothers and don't even realize it. They're both a part of the same family called the Wasters. I don't know if you know the Wasters, <laughs> but the Wasters are a family who find a way to waste away anything that comes their way. Do you grasp Solomon's ridicule here in this proverb? Both faults are actually sins and both faults bring financial trouble. Both faults color a person's life with negativity and both faults deserve shame. Both kinds of men are notorious wasters. One wastes away his opportunities while the other wastes away his resources and assets. Both are brothers of the wastes. And so today I've got three points I wanna go through and I wanna let you go this morning. Good morning, good morning everybody. Good morning, Phil. Good to have you with us this morning. Good to have you with us this morning. The first point I want to make on this proverb is this, because the proverb is so clear. It's very, very, very clear. The slothful man or the slothful woman is conservative, but refuses to use or make use of opportunities. The slothful man, write this down. The slothful man or woman is a person who is conservative, they know how to conserve things. They know how to conserve what they have. They're very frugal, but they refuse to make use of opportunities. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27, puts it this way. The slothful man roasts not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious to him. What does that mean? The slothful man will actually go and hunt something and bring it home, but he won't cook it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I mean, can you imagine, can you imagine that some, it's like somebody gives you food, but you won't cook it. You won't fix it so that you can eat it. You know, that's a slothful person. That's, that's the kind of person that we're talking about here if that makes any sense. I know that's an extreme example, uh, but hopefully we're gonna come down your lane in just a little bit. I think there's a little bit of sloth in all of us to some degree in one area of our life or another. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 14 says this, he becometh rich that deals with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent I'm sorry, he becomes poor that deals with a slack hand, sorry. He becomes poor that, that has a slack hand or somebody who is slow to act or move or take chance, uh, take opportunity of a chance of, of a lifetime. You can give this person, a slothful person, you can give them a chance of a lifetime, a chance, an opportunity that would bless them that would change and transform their life, but they will never take advantage of it. That's the kind of person we're talking about, a slothful person. The person is lazy, but they're lazy for a reason. They're slow to move and slow to act, but they're slow to move and slow to act, and in many cases do not act for a reason. And we're gonna find that out in just a little bit. But the hand of the diligent makes rich. So somebody who constantly chases after seeks after and works hard to get whatever it is they're trying to achieve, they oftentimes are brought to riches. However, riches is not the goal. And we're going to find that out in just a minute. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number four. Proverbs 13 and verse number four says this, 
the soul of the sluggard desires and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Let me tell you the kind of person that Solomon is talking about here. <clears throat> He's talking about the kind of person that always has something to say, always has these desires and these dreams, but they never, ever launch out to try to achieve them. Have you ever met anybody like that? Like they've got all these dreams, they've got all these plans, all these desires that they want to do, you know, but they never, you never see them actually launch out and do it. They never reach out. They never take any chances. They never take any risk, ever. They never take a risk. They're very conservative, very frugal. They're very, they're frugal with their time. They're frugal with their finances. They're frugal with their assets, whatever assets they might have. They're very conservative. They never try to achieve anything great. But they talk great. They want great things. They desire great things. They're always desiring, but they never have anything. That's what it seems like. That's what it seems like. That's a slothful person in the Bible. That's what the Bible calls a slothful person, a lazy person. We might call them lazy. The Bible calls them slothful. They're slow to move, slow to react, slow to take advantage of, if at all, take advantage, uh, if they take advantage of anything at all. All of us, I believe in some instance or another, in some situations or another, have this kind of uh, wastefulness about us. Here's a person who may be given an opportunity, but they will waste it away by not doing anything with it, by not doing anything about it, by not trying to actually achieve anything. A slothful, so-called lazy man is a man with dreams and goals, a woman with dreams and goals, but he or she won't go after them. He won't reach out for them. She will not try to grab it at all. They are paralyzed in their slothfulness and they're paralyzed for a reason. And that reason is revealed in the parable of the talents. Now, we talked about this, I think, either yesterday or the other day, but it bears repeating today. In the parable of the talents, God, uh, God or Jesus, I should say, talks about, uh, you know, the kingdom of God, and he puts it in this parable form, parabolic form, if you will, for us to understand clearly what the kingdom of God is like. And he says that, uh, there's a, there was a man who had three people who were working for him. He gave one 10 talents he gave, or five talents, gave one three talents. I can't remember the exact talents, but I think it's the first one had like uh, 10 talents. The second one had like five talents. And the third one, he only gave one talent. He only gave one talent. And the person that he gave five, uh, 10 talents to, he doubled his. The person he gave five talents to, he doubled his. When he, when, you know, he left and went away and he came back like a year later or whatever it was. And uh, both those individuals had doubled, uh, at least doubled what they had been given. But the last person who only was given one, only given one to concentrate on, wasn't given five, only given one, only given one talent. A talent is a, a form of money in those days. He doesn't do that. He buries it. He buries the money. Now, I, I want you to think about this. You give somebody some money to actually bless them and help them and provide for them and help them to grow and help them to mature, help them to, you know, to, to, to achieve whatever goals that they may desire to achieve. And they take that money and they don't, they don't, watch this, they don't use it at all. They just bury it. They just bury the money and they put it in the ground and they wait for you to come back and watch this. I want you to see this in Matthew chapter 25 verses 24 through 28. Matthew chapter 20. Why would a person do that? Why would a person, for example, I'll give you a, a prime example. I have this channel that I'm trying to start with YouTube and a, 
and uh, trying to develop with Facebook. And uh, I'm going to be asking for some funds from uh, from you and from others to uh, donate to for me to get a camera. Uh, hopefully, get uh, my my wife bought me a brand new computer. Thank God, right? So bless the Lord. So I don't need a computer, but I do need a, a camera or two, maybe two cameras, uh, some software, uh, some uh, some more lighting. I've got lights, but I need some more lighting, maybe some ambiance, some things that I want to put together. I want a microphone, a good microphone, a really good micro microphone, a professional microphone, and some other things. So if I come to you and I say, listen, can you donate to this cause that I have because I'm trying to expand the ministry that I have and so forth. And people give to me, they give me $10,000, right? I'm just saying, I'm not saying that's going to happen. But if it did, <laughs> if it did happen <laughs> and people gave me $10,000 to achieve this short-term goal that I'm trying to reach in terms of this uh, in terms of uh, this ministry, and I take that money, $10,000, and I bury it. I just bury it in the ground. What would you think of me? What would you think of me? And you come back a year later and say, Mike, did you get the camera? Did you do this? Did you do that? And I say, no, no, no. I took that money, and I buried it in the ground. What would you think of me? I want you to see what Jesus says about this. Matthew chapter 25, verses 24 through 28. He says, Then he which had received one talent, he came and said, Lord, <clears throat> this is what he said, Lord, I knew you. I know you that you are a hard man. You reap where you're not sowing and you gather where you have not strong. I was afraid and I went and hid my talent on the earth and lo, thou hast that that is thine. Here it is. Here's the one talent you gave me. I still got it. The Lord answered him, verse 26, thou wicked and slothful servant. Notice the word slothful. Thou wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I sowed, that I gathered where I have not strong. You should have therefore put my money to the exchangers. You could have gave my money to the bankers. And then at my coming back, I could have received at least some interest on my money, but you couldn't even do that. Instead, you took my money that I gave to you to help you to build up and you put it in the ground. Wow. You didn't make any use of it at all. Verse 28, take therefore the talent from him and give it to them which have 10 talents. Isn't that something? What is the point of this parable? The point of this parable is, is that a person like this is somebody that you literally cannot give anything. You can't give anything to them because they're just going to waste it. They're just not going to make use of it. Now, they're not going to squander it. They're not going to spend it frivolously. You know, they're not going to do anything like that with it. No, they're very circumspect with the money. They're very circumspect with what you've given to them. But they're, they're lost. They're slothful. They're, they're slothful. Why are they slothful? It says it right here in the text. Number one, they're slothful. Hear me, hear me. If you're a slothful person, it's probably because, number one, you feel like those who give you things are exacting, overbearing, judgmental people. That's number one. And number two, you, you are afraid of failure. Are you listening to me today? Are you listening to me today? Good morning, Bernadette. Good morning. Good to have you with us. A slothful person, a person who is slothful, a person who, generally speaking, is lazy, a person who won't try anything new, a person who won't launch out into the deep, a person who will not do anything, won't try any new experience. I, no, I don't feel like doing that. No, I don't want to do that. No, people like that are people who are living in 
absolute fear of other people's judgment of them. Are you listening to me today? Slothful people are people who are paralyzed by fear of loss or losing or fear of failure and being exposed for not being the greatest person since sliced bread. Okay, let me just say this right here, right now, to you, to me, to all of us, to all of us so that we understand something. Everybody fails. Everybody is going to be criticized. Everybody is going to be talked about. Everybody is going to have them name whispered in conversations behind their back. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you come from. I don't care how nice you look. I don't care how awesome your portfolio is. I don't care what house you live in. People are going to criticize you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to lambaste you. They're going to malign your name. It's just the nature of life, the nature of the business. Get used to it. It's a part of life. Come on, say amen out there. So ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter. If you don't do something, you're gonna get criticized. If you do do something, you're gonna get criticized. You might as well do something and try to accomplish something. Somebody say amen. Even when people hate on you, can't stand you, despise your name, or say you didn't do it right, at least you tried. At least you tried. And trying is better than doing nothing. Somebody say amen. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. You got to try something in order to know what's right to do and what's wrong to do sometimes. Sometimes you try something to find out, oh, you know what? That's why that didn't work. And you go back and you do it again. And you do it better. Somebody say amen. Slothful people are people who are scared and afraid. They're living in fear. And I'm going to give you a text to help you out this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7. Here's what the Bible says. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Somebody say, bless the Lord today. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Somebody say amen. If you're a slothful person today, you need a sound mind. You need a proper mind that works properly and gives and has proper understanding of the reality of life that people are going to talk about you irregardless of what you do or don't do. It doesn't matter. And you need to understand that life is all about learning, growth, maturity, uh, 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 taking chances messing up and getting up, dusting yourself off and going back at it. Somebody say amen. You're ne listen, listen. It's very rare that you are going to do something for the first time and be successful. It's very rare. Somebody say amen. But you got to do it. You got to do it so that you can get better, so that you can grow, so that you can grow those around you, so that you can have some form of influence that's a blessing to others. Somebody say amen. It is a robbery for you to not take advantage of opportunities that God has given to you. You are robbing the world of what God is trying to do through you. Are you listening to me today? Hallelujah. Let me move on. Let me move on. Now we want to talk about the so-called diligent person who's wasteful. Point number two is this. Point number two, write this down. The diligent man or woman is adventurous, but refuses to become mindful of his or her own treasure. Going to write, the, write it down, write it down, write it down. That's what this proverb is saying. This proverb, Proverbs 18 and verse 9, is saying this. Point number two, the diligent man or woman is adventurous, but refuses to become mindful of his own treasure. Proverbs 21, verse 17. Proverbs 21, verse 17 gives light to this a little bit. It says, he that loves pleasure shall be a poor man, 
and he that loves wine and oil shall not be rich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Proverbs 21 and verse number 20, just three verses down. Proverbs 21 and verse number 20 says this, there is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spins it up. Mm. So who is this man, this wasteful man, this wasteful brother who works hard and is diligent at what he does? He's a consistent, she's a consistent worker. They work all the time, but they're working just to waste what they get. Here is a person who lives solely for the purpose of pleasure. They're working solely for the purpose of wasting their work on their own hedonistic vice. Are you listening to me today? You've got a lot of people like this. You got a lot of people like this. These are people who pay no attention to their finances at all. If they do, they use it so that they can spend more money on what they really love to do, which is going to the club, getting out with the girls, hanging with the chicks and all that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They buy all these extravagant things to make themselves look good. Huh? A lot of athletes have this problem. They spend their money on temporary pleasures instead of utilizing their funds, their finances, the things that they actually work hard for. You see, they work hard. Here's, here's the mindset. I work hard, so I play hard. Or I play hard because I work hard. That's the mindset, right? You've heard that. You've heard that. I know you've heard that phrase before. I work hard, so I play hard. But ladies and gentlemen, you're working hard isn't helping anything. You're just wasting it on pleasures and hedonistic vices that have nothing to do with contributing or contributing to society at all. Are you listening to me today? And you're wasting away your future. Notice with me. Notice with me. This truth is very much brought out in the story or the parable, one could say, of the prodigal son. You know the story of the prodigal son. A certain man had two sons. The Bible tells us there were two sons. And watch this, Luke chapter 15 and verse 11, 12 and 13. Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 13. Watch this. Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 13 say, and he said, a certain man had two sons. This is Jesus telling this story. Verse 12, and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divides unto them all his living. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to make the point, this point. The young man had an inheritance coming to him, but he was working. He was working in his father's vineyard and doing whatever his father was asking him to do. He just got sick of it because the reason why he got sick of it is because he couldn't spend what he felt like he was earning on his own vices. Are you listening to me today? So he said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask daddy to give me everything that he owes me, everything that I'm owed. And I'm going to go out here and do what I want to with it. See, this is the problem with these kinds of people. They're very diligent in work, but they spend all their resources, all their assets on wasteful things. Watch this. The father, give me the portion of goods that follows to me. And the father divided up all of his money, all of his assets, all of his resources, all of his inheritance among the two boys. And he gave the younger son his portion, huge portion, rich portion. Watch this, verse 13. And not many days after, watch this, I want you to hear this. Not many days after, 
It wasn't a year. It wasn't like 10 years. It says not many days after. It wasn't, it wasn't very long. The younger son gathered all together and he took his journey in a far country and there wasted all his substance on what the Bible calls riotous living. Riotous living. You know what that is? Riotous living is the kind of living where you spend and it disappears and you take more of your money and you spend it on exactly the same thing. It's called throwing good money after bad. You know how you put money on an investment and that investment is a dead investment. It falls under, it completely, you know, it's just messed up, it becomes bankrupt. And here you come trying to revive the asset by putting more new money into the situation. The situation is dead. The company is blowed up. The company uh, uh, owners and the president and everybody, they've gone on and started new, but you still pouring in new money after, that's what he was doing. That's what he was doing. The, really, the story of the prodigal son really should be named the wasteful son. That's the word prodigal means wasteful. And there are people right now who are even watching this right now. You're very diligent in your work. You achieve a lot in terms of resources. You make decent, good money, but you're not utilizing your resources for good. Instead, you're throwing it down the drain, doing things you know you ought not do. Are you listening to me today? Are you listening to me today? So, God has not called us to become rich hedonists in search of pleasures of this life. Instead, God has called us to become faithful stewards of what he has given us. Notice Proverbs chapter 28, verses 19 and 20 tells us something significant. Proverbs chapter 28, verses 19 and 20 tells us, he that tills the ground shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. There are a lot of people who try to get rich quick. And it's not just, I'm not talking about get rich just only in terms of money. I'm talking about they want to live this, you know, lifestyle of the rich and famous, right? They just want to spend their money on all of these frivolous types of gifts. They want to spend money on a million dollar car and, you know, a $30 million house. And you know what I mean? Do you really need a $30 million house? I'm, you, I'm saying you, do you really need that? Do you need to have your money tied up that much money tied up in one house? And it's just you? a couple of kids and a wife, and that's it? You got to pay to maintain the place? It costs you $50,000 a month to maintain the place? Do you really need your own jet? It costs you $120,000 a month in maintenance and gas for the jet that you only fly a couple of times a year? Do you really need that? Can't you fly coach? Can't you fly even, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, what's the other? I don't even know because I never fly. First class? Just fly first class. No, I got to have my own. Why? Because I'm trying to get rich quick. I'm trying to make myself look or appear greater than what I really am. And you're wasting away resources that God has graciously allowed you to have. Well, I work for it. You don't understand, Pastor Hayes. I work for it. It's my money. I can do what I want to do. Okay. Okay. It's your money. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Okay. Okay. Said the fool, said the fool, this is your thing. You do what you want to do. That's what the fool said. Because it's not yours. Nothing we have is ours. Our own life isn't ours. Our life is borrowed. That's a whole nother sermon. Let me move on. Let me move on. <laughs> 
Point number three is this. There are two keys to financial and uh, social, if you will, success. Two keys. I'm going to give them to you and let you go right here. Two keys. The first key is this. We must be liberal in giving to God's cause. We must learn to become liberal in giving to God's cause. Proverbs 3 and verse 9 says this, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. God says, if you give to me, if you sow to me, if you work towards my goals, my mission, my, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, my plans and what I'm trying to do, he said, I'm going to overflow your life with abundance. See, and that covers both of us. That covers both individuals. That covers, be quiet, Siri. Uh, not Siri on my iPad. It's starting up. So um, what God is saying is that don't be afraid to give to the cause of God. And don't be uh, uh, so selfish that you don't want to give to the cause of God. Are y'all with me today? Those are the twin brothers of waste. The twin brothers of waste. One brother doesn't want to do anything. The other brother wants to do everything except what God has called him to do. <laughs> Isn't that something? They're wasters. These are individuals that if you give them something, they're not going to bring anything of substance with it. Whether they put it in the ground or whether they waste it away on money, women, wine, sex, and drugs. Both of the extremes are sin, and they rob the world and God of what it is that God designed for us to bring to the community of faith. First point, we must learn to be liberal in giving to the cause of God. Second point is this, and I'm going to let you go. Second point is this, we must learn to use our opportunities to prepare for the future. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the future is coming. <laughs> whether you believe it or not, whether you know it or not, the future is coming. And the future always brings some controversy, some conflict, some concern, some issue. There's going to be some downturn. Always. Things do not just keep going up, 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 up. up, up. Are y'all with me today? Anybody who's lived life more than 10 years on this planet knows that life does not just keep going up, 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 up. The world would have you think that. The world would have you believe that we're just advancing and we're just constantly moving ahead, moving forward. We're constantly going up. But ladies and gentlemen, the world is filled with all kinds of depressions, all kinds of precipitous falls and failures. Are you all listening to me? And you and I have the opportunity in a time of plenty to prepare for the future. Notice with me Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. It says this, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide or overseer or even a ruler provides her meat in the summer and gathers her food during the time of harvest. To store up for the times when things will not be so plenty. Notice with me, Proverbs 30 and verse 25, as we close, Proverbs 30, Proverbs 30 and verse 25 says this, the ants are a people that are not strong, yet they prepare their meat, they prepare their meat in summer. <laughs> in other words, the ant might not be that strong in terms of its size and, you know, and things of that nature, it may not seem like the ant has much of a power of influence or whatever, but God says the ant is smart. The ant is wise because the ant knows that there's a time coming when things aren't going to be as good as they are now. And you and I 
must learn to prepare. Prepare for what's coming. We're not asking you to be a negative person. We're just asking you to store away some things, amen, for a time when things will not be as they are now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, none of us knew in January that COVID-19 was going to hit us. Am I right about it? None of us knew. Nobody knew. But we knew something was coming. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now that 2020 isn't the end. <laughs> 2021 is coming, and there's going to be a whole new set of challenges. There's an election coming that's going to bring a whole new set of obstacles. You and I need to prepare for it. And I don't mean just financially. I mean spiritually. I mean emotionally. Huh? You and I need to spiritually prepare for what is about to come on this planet. Now, if you think things are just going to keep on flowing the way that they've been flowing, you know, and things are just going to be smooth and everything's going to be wonderful, oh, things are going to get back to normal if so-and-so gets his presidency, oh, things are just going to balance out and we're just going to go back to everything being all nice, kind, and wonderful and comfortable. You really have lost your faculty. Because if you look and see on the plane of history and look and see what's going on right now, you know that we are headed for a huge precipitous downturn. And we have to prepare. You and I have to prepare. I believe, I believe that Jesus is coming back. I believe that Jesus is on his way. That's what I believe. And I believe that the Lord is coming again very soon. And like Matthew chapter 25 and 26 and 24 tells us, we need to prepare for his coming. Huh? We need to be spiritually connected to the source of life. And that is Jesus Christ. So I invite you to prepare, to store up the gifts that God has given to you in terms of opportunity of time, talent, and treasury and give towards God's cause and prepare yourself for what God is going to do and God's going to allow in the future. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for this lesson today. I pray it's been a blessing to somebody. If it has, I pray, Lord, that you would empower them and invigorate them and help us to learn, Lord, not to be the brothers or sisters of waste. But Lord, help us to take advantage of every opportunity you afford us to be able to build the kingdom of God here on this earth. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, thank you so much for watching and being with us today. I appreciate you. God bless you. If you like and you were blessed by what you've heard or been a part of today, please like this and share this on your Facebook page. And if you already haven't, please subscribe to the PTPOG uh, 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 ministry <laughs> uh, page or ministry group, I should say, on Facebook. Also, if you are watching this by way of YouTube, we would appreciate if you left a comment. I really uh, appreciate all comments and all uh, things that people uh, have in, in terms of response uh, to what they've heard. Also, if you would, please, please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Practicing the Presence of God. If you haven't already, please do that right now. I really appreciate it. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. I love you with the love of the Lord. And please always remember, don't ever forget. P T P O T every day. And if you do that, God will keep you from being a brother or a sister of waste, but he will keep you and allow you to be a blessing to the community of faith. God love you. God bless you. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.